a Where's lot of spells to cleanse. We need a tank. Well, but help me understand the CM because. Hold on. There's Puck. Is your hero. Is that is DM? There some uh, it's gonna be DM's hero. I like that they saved it for last. I don't think that it's the answer. Uh, he definitely has a lot of pressure on his shoulders, but it's all. I mean, it's a it's a mag juggernaut. I still think Navi's gonna win though. If you're gonna ask me for prediction, Navi has a, a better, well-rounded plan. Well, but let's. I I, I want to talk about this CM. This is a still a, a professional team going against a very very good opponent. What is that CM there for? It's just a support hero. That, I that, understand that, but like... That, uh, the right. but the Bet Rider can spam out his Sticky Napalm more yeah. often. Juggernaut has his spin up more often, so the aura is already going to provide that. On a lane, especially yeah. if you're maybe up against a Trilin or something, you can have at least the Nova doing quite well. Mm -hmm. The Frostbite's you, not bad. It's uh, not bad. Frost, it just yeah, yeah. doesn't excel at everything. You can anything. Frostbite LC during duel. It's obviously not, not able to be cleansed. Okay. You can alt around him. Uh, it's nice against supports like Coddle that don't have any offensive capabilities because you can just outroam them, mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to need from this Crystal Maiden. You've got to get active. You've got to find kills around the map early on. And but it's a Pexu CM. It's a very high damage support hero. It's well, not a bad hero by any means. Okay. It's got like the top five. It's a top five win rate right now in MMR games over 5K. Well, so and that's it's what I'm saying. Like like, I would, I don't but want mid people game falls yeah, off. I don't want people to think that this CM is just complete garbage. That oh. like that they're. What, that's what it sounds like. Well, but no, I don't want them to think that. That's why I'm asking you why it's there. The, so the, that the puck is the one you should be questioning, not the okay. Well, tell maiden. me about puck. It just doesn't. It doesn't change the win condition here. Navi still hold that those cards, and sure, you do have Mag Jug. Theoretically, he could just take over the game, dominate. But but they allowed them to have Agnes, right? Like yeah, they, but I mean, it's more they've just they've just game Ooh, look at well. Ooh, well ooh, that hold changed. On. You put a dollar on <laughs> Navi. You're only making eight cents coming back. But you put a dollar on Vega, you got it six times. You keep doing the math for the viewers at home. Do you think they're dumb? Do you think they can't multiply their dollar by the numbers the on the screen? The point is that... One times 6.1 is? 6.1. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's also nice to just talk dollars sometimes. And you can also make sure that if you go to... But if we you talk dollars, TV, you got to make sense. And you, can, and you go to loot.bet, you put in Valentine, you can get an additional bonus. Who's it going to be? See, that's Navi. something they might not know. You know, and if I wasn't interrupted by this crazy Navi. rainbow giraffe. Hello anyway, here. Shiva, who you got? Navi. Yeah, give me that. Navi? Navi, uh, well, Navi yeah. Navi. Navi for I sure. have Navi as well. You better have it. You better have Navi. Let's do this. Yeah, thank you very much, Rob. Let's see what they've got up their sleeves here for game two. Navi versus Vega Squadron. And some, uh, some changes around with the drafts. We're going to see some different that stuff. We is. are... We're going to see a true Legion commander, Kevin. Ooh. I mean, the hero just got buffed, right? Um, Legion as a hero is... She seems so powerful, and you've all had those games where she just gets stupid amounts of damage. But she just has trouble winning games. And I think part of the reason is that... E like, in late game, when you have tons of damage, yeah, you can guarantee one guy dies with a duel. But then your duel's on cooldown for, like, 50 seconds. Yeah. And after that happens, you're just kind of like... Well, what do I do now? I can, like, run heroes down, kind of. But they're not going to fight me. No. Um, so the hero has issues, but... Um, movement speed buffs to the hero have come through. She can cleanse uh, other allies, which can be really nice. Um, but I'm not super confident in the hero, I guess. I, I'm not confident that it's the hero that can make the big difference. But against Lasso, it's excellent. First blood actually going to go to Vega as Blizzy Lasso gets run down by, by Madara. Uh, the two of them, the, the classic old combo, the Jug CM. Yeah, it's one of the oldest combos in the game for sure. They probably just got overconfident in their ability to possibly get kills here. And as long as Jug spins before the Illuminate hits, then there's no way that Jug will die first. Well, let's see uh, how these uh, side lanes go as well. So, uh, Vegas Squadron, obviously, they've moved DM to, to play the puck on the off lane, and they've got Kezu playing the, the bat mid. Is this just because the bat would just have no impact on a side lane because there is the support legion? Uh, and also uh, the Weaver as well. Um, yeah. Leaning Weaver against Bat is going to be really easy because even if he tries to chase you and kill you, you just Sukuchi and you run away. You're never going to be killed. Sineko potentially could get a kill here if he pops a Mango and goes for a charge. But yeah, this this dual lane is just so strong. The CM plus Jug really helps. They got the first blood. Best level 2 now as well. That makes things a little scary for Blizzy and Sineko. We'll see how careful they they do play and how much farm they do get in response. So, so the bottom lane, as you say, they move the bat away because they don't want to have the bat playing against the Weaver. We'll have to see if uh, if this puck can have a bit of a better impact in terms of slowing down the Weaver's farm. At the moment, 
It doesn't look great down there. So it's to only two CS on the puck. And obviously, you compare that to the fact that Weaver is nine and three, uh, feeling no sort of pressure at all. And uh, the mid lane as well, already nine for zero, six for three, pretty close. Um, but the deuce are just not, not feeling pressure from the bat. There's another nice thing about CM in the laning stage against uh, Beast. Um, she's not going to be able to experience it yet, but once you get Frostbite, you can guarantee four kills. Yeah. Um, just you don't really want to get Frostbite level one because the Nova is just a better level one skill. Um, in terms of the last hits mid, because he was seven and three, having a little bit of trouble. That mid kind of works, but um, you're not always mobile enough to guarantee all the last hits, so it can be a bit iffy, but at least hit a fast level six. See top there all coming into play. So Neko able to get a good blast on point there onto Madara. As Madara is just down to that final tango, pop it branch. Is the level three though and will take the point, of course, in the healing ward. Needs to make sure he's able to get himself back up and help mid lane. That was one way to get a kill. Yeah, a bit of an attempt onto magical with that skewer, but there's the safe from Chu instantly removing this napalm. And that's uh, certainly something that's gonna make the life of the bat mid that little bit harder, as otherwise that would have been a surefire kill. Yeah, that was actually an impressive amount of damage. I, I didn't think that that um, Medusa was in any way threatened, but with the skewer back and then following up with the shockwave to keep him in position a little bit longer, it was close. Yeah, we can sort of expect those TPs from Chiu any time. Kezu gets aggressive in that middle lane. Very hard for him to get the kills, but can just try and do his best to, to pressure and slow down the farm a little bit of the Medusa. Are there any cool combos that they get from um, cooldown reduction from Cuddle this game? Oh, uh, I guess. I mean, what's the Legion nuke's pretty low cooldown, isn't it? Not really. No, it's like isn't a it? Isn't it the Roman Yeah, that's not. Oh, I guess it's. Oh, oh. Top lane. He gets the crit finally. I'm gonna see Suneko be able to trade at least a little bit. It's peck suit. We'll go. We'll go down, but obviously again, Vega Squadron having the better trade. Madara getting involved in two kills onto Blizzy already in this top lane. That's good too, because he doesn't even have items yet on Jug. Normally you can't get kills with just right clicks, but. With the CM, there's just so much disable that it just lets Jug get all these right clicks in. With the, with just the fast boots that he got, it's it's like he he's not just a spin hero, you know. It works out. Yeah, Beast's gonna try to pick up a bracer though. It might make a difference in survivability because it's basically how you beat Jug. You just need to survive through the burst usually yeah. of his spin. But with two deaths now, this is a good way to throw the game and throw the lane away. Well, one thing the uh, the keeper of the light, of course, is gonna be very good at down the line is. It's just for this team fight control that they'll have between the, the Will of the Wisp, the Duel, and the Stone Gaze. Uh, it's going to be a lot of chance for the Stone Gaze to, to, to connect. It's top lane, another kill again for Vega. At the same time, they do get away with that kill in mid. Chu this time, not quite able to be there in time to save him. The, the trade continue again. They did lose uh, a support, but Blizzy this time was able to stay alive and bring down Pexu in return. So at least now Na'Vi able to get that trade on that top lane support for support. She crystallized gear up and... Radiant Some of those bounty runes. At the same time, though, Vega will have MNT able to claim those top two bounty runes in return. He's just looking to see if he can get another kill mid. Yeah. So once they get the three stacks, Deuce is so slow that if she's looking to get a last hit and then Mag comes in, it takes forever for her to turn around. So it's probably why they've been able to set up these kills so well. But it also kind of seems like this is a matchup where they've been prepping and planning like, oh, we know how to get this kill. We know we can win this lane. We just need to put a bat mid and then put any other support on the map and then she's vulnerable. What's that cool immortal? Looks like she's Viper. What, what is that? I don't know, yeah, because it's not... I don't, it's it's not, probably the new set. I don't Dota think it is, though, because I, I that big headpiece, I'm pretty sure, is not part of the new set. Okay. Because uh, trust me, I've got the new set. It looks fabulous. But it looks way more golden. I know she was covered in like sticky name on that. I think this is a slightly different twist. Opposed to that, that fancy gold set. Oh, I love us what Seneko's doing blockwise. She got the first slow off, but not gonna be able to get the frostbite. Lizzy tries best to. She might die. Seems gotta be a little careful. A bit of a run, but he still goes down. So Pexu will be able to get himself out, but this is scary. You know, this is a game with a jug Magnus. So yeah, Matter has true. a good time as it is anyway. If uh, if Navi don't really have the heroes in place to start to pressure the jug's farm. He's going to get pretty out of control. The dude, uh, the, well, the Weaver's going to try to keep up. Depends on the build of the Weaver. We did see a Weaver go for the Midas earlier today. Um, helped him sort of keep up in farm. We'll see what Crystallizer's build is going to be. 
Navi may just be more set on getting the action going and just leaving it up to the Medusa to farm for the late game. The difference though is that having like an agility hero against a Medusa is just a lot better because yeah. you can very easily pick up a Diffusal Blade if you want. Even if he goes like Diffusal Manta or something like that. They're like, oh, oh uh, not the carrier. Oh. <laughs> it looked like they weren't looking there. Yeah, I really did. I mean, losing losing your carry drone on me or support drone on me slash whatever happens sometimes. The, the carrier, carrier. That would have been so bad. But if you if you're able to get like defusal wave potentially and use that to to kill the Medusa, it'd be really scary. So it's gonna be harder to to deal with the Juggernaut this yeah. game than, uh, than it was and the last one. You can absolutely one. afford to get an earlier defuser than normal because you've got the Magnus. You, know, you, you yeah. don't really need to get that Battle Fury. You can afford to go for like Yasha defusal Manta. Nice yeah, he may go Manto first, definitely oh. possible. Chu getting uh, way too over aggressive there underneath the tower. Pexu and DM instantly turn and burst him down. Yeah, combo in a silence and a root, that's a stun. It basically is. Yeah. It's a, it's a homemade stun, that. It's a items. And they get the tower deny as well, baby. It's kind of interesting to see that Puck has just been doing all right in the offlane, genuinely. I mean, they got level two really fast on CM this game. Yeah. And they have such a good lineup for it. Like Magnus support, he can basically cast spells way more freely than normal. Oh yeah, and you even pre yeah, you're right. And even in the mid lane, like you you normally just want to spam um sticking napalm on your opponent, but you do actually run out of mana eventually if you spam it too much. But the rotations from maybe next time so far to, to shut down the <laughs> the the Dusa has been actually pretty incredible. He's still got really high last hits, fifty nine and seven on the Medusa, but but his net worth is not the same as what Jug is. No, not at all. Matter has uh, had a dream lane up top with the amount of kills that he's been involved in. Now we have to be careful about how much more they give to him. Blizzy is nearly the six, so at least at that point, he'll have a way to stop the Jug from chasing him down with the Blade Fury. Ideally, he's going to want to make aggressive plays with that. And it's going to be wraparound from Vega Keizu heading up towards the top lane as the Bat Rider. Shockwave's going to pull Suneko back, but it'll be quick to blast Keizu back away. Kezu trying his best to get on top of Suneko. The Flame Break will knock him back. Matter continues to chase, but a TP is in from Magical. They still get the lasso off. Suneko in trouble and will fall. See if they can punish them, Na'Vi, here as they go across to Kezu with the Shikuchi. Bugs are out to him as they should be able to find this bat. They lose the coddle, but they will claim the mid bat rider. Crystallize was so ready for that. Yeah. He's like, I know exactly where this bat's going. I'm going to lead him off. Help guarantee the skill. Not the best rotation to get, like, you drop your mid hero for a support like that, but it does force rotations. But with that said, there's still decent lane setups here. Um, Navi's now t TP'd Coddle Bottom, but they are, aren't going to be getting as good a farm uh, on the top lane, or on the bot lane, that is. And they might be able to get away with this tier one tower as well. We're going to see MNT and Madara show themselves in an attempt to peel, crystallize, and Lizzie away from the push. And we'll do so for now. Fat Vega, they've got four up it. They're going to go straight for the kill on to Chris. Uh, to crystallize. He's got one more Shikuchi there that gets him out of harm's way. Obviously with the lasso still on cooldown, not really the optimal control for this Weaver. This Crystallize does Dyer's get himself far away from any sort of trouble. Pexu just maxed in his aura out. That's probably the right move. Like, you, you really just need one Frostbite to deal with the pigs. So, from there, he can start getting his Novas and things later on. It's actually such a good CM game. Yeah. Like, things like people getting dual, people getting roared. Like, you can, you can help protect your teammates as long as you're not the guy that gets initiated on. And as long as he keeps his levels up. It's going to help the team with three. You can see the odds there starting to settle around that 1.1 for Na'Vi, 5.5. Nothing too drastic has changed this game to indicate this match is going to go any other way. This one, this game too, obviously this series is a different different question. As you can imagine, if Vega do win with this Jug Magnus, they would be very unlikely to get it through the draft again. It's an Aco. He's found. Kezu DM and Pexu invade Na'Vi's half of the map. Catch out the support call. Navi desperately needing time, but Vega may not be team to, to give it to them. As, as we've been saying, as soon as that Jug gets his first few items, thanks to the Empower, they're going to be able to start moving around with him, having that healing wall for the sustain. Lots of ways to nuke the waves, push into towers, get that grab, get that catch behind it with the lasso. And I really like the item that Jug built this game. He went phased into immediate drum, and normally you don't buy drum because it's just, it's like an early team fighting item, but it doesn't accelerate your farm much. But if he's got Empower to rely on, He's basically guaranteeing that he's really, really strong right now, more than any other item build that he can buy. Did you have his nuke there? That probably, I don't know if it would have been better necessarily. How many points has he got in here? Imagine, he's just got the one point. Probably like point. three. Oh, is he, ma he is maxing it. I, I, yeah, I know he had at least two, oh, if okay. I'm not mistaken. 
mid lane. Tower's going to be taken. They are going to get knocked back. They do have the keep of the light. Will o Wisp down to drag Peksu back in. They've got a dual opportunity too, and a successful one it will be. As they take down Pex, the Crystal Maiden gone. Kezu has to firefly his way out of there. MNT coming in from the side, but knows that he has to run with the way that they're chasing down. Uh, tower down, but Chu's going to be happy on the support legion, getting his first dual win. That damage bad. is always always going to be nice, especially when you're playing it as a support role. Yeah. Don't forget CM's recent buff. Like when she uses her ultimate, now she gets ten armor. That's pretty cool. It's a good way to make her survivable, even if your opponents don't have stunts during their ulti. And they're going to see if they can kill Blizzy. It's going to be hard. No bad ulti, but good ways to do damage. Yeah, and it doesn't look like anyone's going to TP in or has the chance to do so. So Blizzy does does fall. RP's out though. Maybe this means that Navi can play a little more out there on the map on the mid lane and the top lane as the pressure is starting to come back in onto that mid tier one magical starting to chip into it and it has nearly fallen Puck so it's going to so be fun, around actually. Puck has 1700 gold right now past like boots and, and two no talismans like he's so he's been looking solo. more straight for the blink he's been like borderline solo offlane this whole game and he's yeah. still accelerating fast and the, and the cool part is that he's got maxed out silence that means he can start getting into gank song weaver really easily just jump in silence drop the dream coil and just focus like nukes on on uh, Weaver. Yeah, it's gonna give them a way to punish Crystallize. Yeah, pressure is gonna be on Chu to just constantly be ready to save his cause back with that dispel. Whenever the lane gets hairy, just empower the jug, let him send it in the jungle, and then you just try to slow things down yourself. And the other cool thing is, MNT can just buy uh, Tranquils this game. Doesn't have to buy Arcanes to elongate his mana. He's got CMR to offset most of that. So he'll just get as many free levels as he can. Just needs to delay the tower dying, basically. That's it. Good glyph there to keep the creeps alive, and that's pretty much going to guarantee the tower lives. Yeah, just that little bit longer for sure. I mean, as you say, Matter is coming in with the wraparound. He has an Omni Slash. If any of He's just here to farm. Out. He doesn't care. Yeah, I guess not. Barret are going to try to roam around from the side. Could Firefly to get behind his opponents. Well, Joe, believe it or not, is looking oh, for a kill not, here. Yeah, he feels that he might be able to find the call, but as you say, he's got to be a little bit careful. Lots of TP's coming in. Pexu even joining the fray as well up top. See if they can catch out Na'Vi. But Na'Vi have already started to retreat. Back away, and Kezu can't quite get on top of them. Link Dagger nearly there for Kezu on his back. They do need these, these initiation tools to really get their hands on Na'Vi. They'll start to show. I want to push for this tier one tab. Blizzy's going to look for the wraparound. Has got a roar. Can find a target in time, that is. Peksu. Could have maybe roared the CM there, but after the frostbite, probably not worth it. Yeah, a little hesitation with the backup around. And, and they oh. still have to worry about empowered oh, Omni Slash. Oh, he's got Diffusal Blade now finished, too. Yeah. He's quick. 15 so, minutes. So he's got all these agility items, so it just makes his empower better. So what's kind of cool about his build. And if he ever does, God forbid, find Medusa, he's going to shred her so oh, fast. Because yeah. every hit is going to drain 50 mana. And that's the, the key to beating Medusa, is draining her mana. Really, any disable they can get on heroes. Omni Slash is super dangerous. Vega's still trying to smoke up. They still don't have that blink on Kezu. So I'm going to hope that they are able to walk in and get a lasso off. Blizzy. He looks to be the target here as he is out on his own. Not expect the dive round behind the tower. He'll pop a roar out, but there is no way he's getting out for this one. Do have to drop the dream core for it. Kill nonetheless. As Blizzy is taken, and that will give more than enough space for Vega Squadron to finish that tier one top. And they didn't even have to commit a, uh, a lasso to that. So they're still available. And and basically, Kezo just doesn't have his blink yet because he's been trying to space create, which has been fine. I mean, that's t typically what <coughs> excuse me what off offlaners are used to anyway. So <coughs> this could be. Let's see if the silence is long enough with the lasso, the firefly, the napalm. They don't quite have it. It was close, incredibly close to taking down Crystallize, but time lapse out in time. And he will be able to get himself back out to the safety of his own half of the map. Back around to the rest of the team. Magical does continue to farm without many interruptions. Second highest on the net worth. Still just behind that jug, who we'll see. We'll see how slow they separate from one another. Obviously, jug having the power of the empower. Medusa just having the innate ability with the split shot to find Radiant farm at a good pace. Manta picked up by Medusa as well. This is like actually yeah. one of the best defensive item solutions against Jug, other than like a Ghost Scepter, but 
You just make illusions and then hope the slashes hit the illusions instead of your hero. Won't work great if he's cleaving, I guess, but it's one way to try to deal with him. Also, if Batrider blinks on top of you, you're like, there's only one way, one thing I can do, and that's yeah. become untargetable for a brief moment and force him to target the right one. So it's not great for farming, but it's what he has to build. No, it gives you that little window to get the stone gaze off and pretty much most opportunities. The only real thing that could be an issue is if uh, the Magnus is able to get his blink, yep. that RP before you're able to react. But even then, there's still that little window. Yep, you dodge it, no problem. Easy. Magical has been on, on top of his game recently, so we can certainly expect to see that sort of thing. The Ooh. the odds continue to, to feel very confident with Na'Vi. If you uh, guys want to increase your revenue, that's, it's, gambling it, on Vega and then Vega somehow winning is a great way to do it. They've got Jug Magnus. You could turn that dollar into 780. This This Jug. I think you've got to be careful how you write off a Jug Magnus lineup. Yeah. Like, it can become very scary very quickly. Trying to get some harass here in the middle. Both, the two people can buy Diffusal Blades. Oh, show them what's what. It's like, I have RP, get out. He's almost got Blink in, uh, for himself, actually. Man of Steel. He's got nerfed recently. I did well, but it wasn't much. It was all just 35% to 30%. Like, it's still very good. True. It's still a, an obnoxious amount of mana to to take away from your opponent mm -hmm. and to top up your shield. Dusa was queuing up a butterfly next evasion to solve against some of the jug problems. It's a good way to solve it over something like a Scotty typically would be better. But against mana drain, it's just too much of a pain. I really do like the Diffusal on Weaver, though. I think that's a great choice. Gives you a lot more gank options. Like if you can just find a random support hero. Yeah. Just deal some damage, use Diffusal. Get some hits in. It's definitely kill viable. So just standard items for him. The rest of Vega just sitting behind their their important core players. One of the nice things about Jug is he's just not very vulnerable to getting ganked because if he does get gone on, he just spins. The most dangerous thing he has to deal with, I guess there's still Duel and Roar, but it takes a lot of resources to kill him afterwards. This Roche, it will be scanned out by Na'Vi. The bugs in as well, so they are fully aware of what's going on. It seems even with the Empower, still not quite the quickest of Roche lineups that Vega have. Vega, they're much better at killing people with the Fuse of the Army Sacks, the Empower, and they're ready to go straight away. Oh, look, they found a big one. They've found Magical, but the Ignis Fardus is down. That's going to allow Magical to actually get the time to find the Stone Gaze off, and now the fight's starting to fall apart from Vega. They've lost Kezu, they've lost Peksu. They're going to lose Matter as well as the Jewel comes into play. Wow. What? That just, it fell that apart so, so quickly. It looked like it was going to go pretty well they're able to yep. get in vega squadron straight away they find the deucer on the front lines but the will of wish from the coal comes out and suddenly they just they're just stunned they gaze they're looking at this light the follow-ups there with the stone gaze and that's the combo we talked about at the start it's, it's so strong yeah the coolest thing about what happened there was that um the puck or the puck caught both the medusa and the coddle but because they were caught there in the ulti they expected the rp to come afterwards so the smart thing was that the Coddle broke himself on the tether. Normally you dance around, you don't want to break the yeah. tether, but he got himself just up. far enough away yeah. that he didn't get caught in the RP. And because of that, he gets his ulti off a little bit earlier and the game completely, the fight completely changes. Absolutely. If, if Coddle that dies in that RP, the fight's over probably. Oh yeah. VP cleans up, completely different outcome. It's really cool to see people comboing do ulti with other skills that force people to turn. Like yes. we saw it earlier it's today with the, uh, the winner Wyvern. That was a cool combo. This one works really well too. We've got a lot of ways to, to just make these fights have the setup for, yeah. for Magical to, and to, the, to kill. And the crazy thing is that, much like the other game, they've got really good ways to hit it. It's a jug spinning, hitting that thing is the perfect solution because you can break it without having to worry about being stunned. But if Medusa's there, they they, they got a little hesitant hit halfway. They were like, uh, oh shit, we need to get out of here. Oh, Dream is going to be down onto the two of them. We're going to see another attempt towards Magical. Omni Slash is going to come out in the back line. Jumping around onto Choo Choo will try and heal himself up, but it's not enough. They've lost two. But Crystallize has already found the Magnus in return. As Crystallize and Magical, they're trying to fight back. Matter is going to be there with the chase down onto Magical. Magical, you've got to remember, still has that Aegis. The Blade of Fury will end. Magical punching back into DM. Crystallize on top of the phase shift and the silence catching Ooh, out Crystallize. Kill. Is that going to be Crystallize gone? Na'Vi, they've lost four. It's only Magical left alive. He has got a Stone Gaze. Does he have a TP or any way to get out? He's just going to try for the casual walk down the middle lane away from the scary people. But Madara is looking to chase. It's going to be hard to do so. Manta style still available for Magical. And no further lockdown, no Dream Call, no Lasso. So Magical should be able to walk back to the rest of his team as they do start to respawn. But mm. a uh, pretty sizable fight there for Vega Squadron, getting some big kills. Yeah, Madara took that fight really well. Um, 
Most of the time, he would just spin and right-click the Medusa. And normally, when you're spinning, you actually don't do damage. But if you have a, an attack on effect ability, like a Maelstrom yep. or a Diffusal Blade, that does apply. So he's just spinning to basically be invulnerable. It's like a five-second BKB that also does some damage. And then he's just draining her mana. And once her mana is drained, then it's a pretty straightforward kill. So he's, you really see the threat of the Diffusal Blade. It's really scary to deal with. And it's only going to get worse. Um, he also saw the Eagle Song that Medusa is prepping for. So instantly he queues up a Monkey King Bar. Okay. And if he can get that at the same time, he's not going to get it quite on time because he's just building it now. But it's really going to offset this butterfly purchase that Medusa went for right so fast. Crystallize on the hunt once again. And uh, the build from the Weaver, despite being that safe lane, Weaver Crystallize knows he's just got to he's got to keep his Deuce safe. He's, he's queuing up the Aghanim Scepter. Wants to be that second life, that extra save. As we talked That's already, good. they have to save from Chu. Now having it on the Weaver as well. I mean, it, it doesn't really matter about Crystallizer's right click. Yeah, as yeah. long as everyone else can be kept alive, Na'Vi will not have damage issues. Because Vega has lots of options to take fights here. Most of them are going to involve Puck going, uh, dropping oh. an ulti first. And Kezu straight in the RP. Oh, it's going to be brilliant there. Catch it, the three of them. Skewer across out of Crystallizer. Blizzy, Crystallizer is gone. Blizzy, he's falling low as well. He's out of there. Suddenly three gone. As quick plays there from MNT, getting in with the RP. Magical left alone. The Omni Slash still good to go. Oh. The Manta Star won't save him as four fall on Na'Vi. They they came in from the low ground. They just didn't expect or prepare for Vega to be up there. And MNT took no hesitation in getting yeah. in with the ultimate. It was definitely kind of ballsy. Like jumping up and dueling somebody like that <laughs> with as a as a Legion commander is not even safe. Like your team can't really follow up very well. If it was the other side around, it'd be like, okay, Puck can jump in, Batrider can jump in, Mech can jump in, whatever. Pull somebody back. But it was pretty hopeful there for Chu to jump to the high ground like that. It, like, dueling, blink dueling like that is not a safe move. And they cannot afford to go for those sort of plays. Because that will continue to push Vega a little bit ahead. It's now 24 minutes in, a, a very close matchup. Only a 1k lead for Vega Squadron, but a lead nonetheless in a game where the Jug as this pairing with the Magnus and something that as we've seen, even though Magical is very, very farmed, considerably so on the Medusa, they can still rip through him. And the, the teammates aside him fall very quickly to the damage that Madara offers. Over they go, they found themselves a nice little ancient stack. More money for Madara. Yeah, DM's doing so well, by the way. He's already got his Veil and his Boots of Travel finished with his Blink Dagger on Puck. It's crazy. He's the second most farmed hero on the Dire team. Yeah. I get that uh, Kezu's the other one on Batrider, and he's been roaming around a lot, but it's it's impressive that with as few kills as he has, he's just been able to not die and really impact in a big way. And I'm, I imagine you're fine with that as well, with the, the bat sort of falling behind a little bit and farm mm -hmm. you're, and having the puck ahead. as the, the hero just does more with items. I mean, basically everybody has what they need. And yeah. if you think about the benefit that Puck's had from CM this game, he just hasn't had to buy a mana regen item. Uh, maybe he has a bottle or something, but he's basically got like what uh, BOTs, a veil, and a blink dagger. He probably just goes places, uses both of his nukes to clear a whole creep wave, and then he just sits around and his man is always going to catch up because of the CM war. Really helps. That's part of the reason he's got items. Almost of Lads now as well on Magnus. The Zir, the Zir support Magnus like your your four hero. Oh boy, nah. Maybe a five. I, I that's what the completed MKB for matter. Doesn't Not get, to mention the Manta. Doesn't get any easier for this Dusa. Magical has to hope that the team fight comes into place. Navi just, if they walk up blindly into areas like that and get caught off by a three man RP, they're not going to be able to find that setup that we saw them react with earlier on their yeah. half of the map with the Will O Wisp and the Stone Gaze to follow up. There's it, just no time for it. It doesn't even have to just be a an RP. They could do something like blink ulti with Puck and then blink skewer back to break a tether, yeah. stun some guy for like four seconds, and then kill him. Like, they've got options. They could blink ulti and then lasso somebody and pull them out as well. Like, they've got really cool synergy between their heroes. They had some weird stuff with the whole, like, Batrider mid thing, but they made it work in the laning stage. Their drug transitioned with Empower. The roaming from maybe next time was really effective. They made this weird draft look really good, actually. It's Navi, Chu, and Crystallize to trying to alleviate any sort of side lane pressure from top. Vega still. Aggressively posed over Na'Vi's bottom half of the map, ready to start knocking on the door. This Jug, Madara, DD in the bottle as well. The next fight could be a very messy one for Na'Vi if they're not careful. Looks like they'll pressure the tier 2 mid, most likely. Na'Vi's very prepped for this. 
things go bad, they can always just teleport and run to the shrine. Radiance middle tower. And it's got to be hard as well for Navi because. Pexy's kind of running aggressively here. Uh, he's he's going to get dueled and raw, does it seem? Everything onto the Crystal Maiden. Does guarantee an extra duel win for Chu. That was kind of weird. I think they thought that everybody on Navi was in the top lane or something. I'm not sure because CM ran in really confidently there. But that, I, mean, they, they, I mean, they're probably okay with that, right? It was, it was dual raw and Will O Wisp used for that CM yep. kill. Like sure. everything came out. I guess Navi themselves felt that they also had to be cautious and just throw everything in in yep. case that the dual sort of gets counteracted by a certain Magnus RP. They had to make sure, sure the Will O Wisp was there. There's no way for Vega to follow up that fight. It's also a pretty good way to kind of just have like guaranteed stuns against Magnus because if it's going off, I yeah. assume that like the, its duration of going off it can catch new people. Like, if you blink in, and it's already going and off, it would still affect yeah. you. You wouldn't be able to get the RP off straight yeah, away. Exactly. So yeah. it's it's kind of like a probably like a 30-40% uptime guaranteed stun. So it makes the finding those blink RP moments a little harder, too. They go ready to look for another play. And this would be the time to do it. No Will-O-Wisp, no Roar. You've still got your RP, Dreamcore, Omni MDD. Slash, everything ready to go. This is an amazing time for Vega to find a fight. Question is if Na'Vi are going to allow them to do so. Na'Vi only really would crystallize out on the map up top and even himself holding the tree line. So they're very aware that Vega's going to want to try and force something now, especially well with these wards being taken out. So they'll get the D wards, but they won't get any kills for now. It's the revenge for their CM Diamond. Or reclaim this land. And now the map just looks really, really. I guess there are pretty good wards for Navi. They've got wards all over the place. Cliff spots. A lot of top above Roche control kind of thing. But with the gem up, I feel like they just. Yeah, they're going to go for some D wards maybe. And then they're just going to take Roche themselves. Because now that they control this shrine area, it's hard for Navi to be able to contest Roche. That's the area they need to have. So, just like the fact that Ignitus. Fat, fatus? Ignus Fatus. Ignus fa Fatus. Or Will O' Wisp. The fact that that was burned and it, that allowed them to just smoke and enter this part of the map with the gem means that they looked for a fight. There wasn't a fight, but they just got map control and were able to clear out the wards. And now they're just waiting for their opponents to make a mistake. And if they do, it's instant, instantly going to be a tier 2 tower or a Roshan. So Navi has to play defensive for now while split pushing, which is proved to be quite useful. Yeah, they're getting away with quite a bit of a split push here. As now Vega will respond, teeping back the puck to help clear out the waves. Now we were able to get that wave right up to the tier 3 tower. Another tower taken by Vega Squadron. They continue to have that superior map control. Throwing that lead just slowly, but 3k advantage for them. Oh, is it going to a hex on Weaver, actually? Oh, did he change it from the axe? Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. Kind of weird. I mean, he could use it to kill Puck. Maybe that's the thought. So otherwise, there's no way he ever touches Puck when he's split yes. pushing. Yeah. But even that, I mean, with that Hex Diffuse, does he have enough damage to kill him during the... Uh, a Puck, yes. A Puck or a Crystal Maiden, they will, do a they will die. Batrider, maybe. The other two, the other heroes, Magnus and, like, Jug, probably no. not. Yeah. No. And then they'll chance to play around. It's getting closer to that Roshan timer. Vega Squadron do continue to hold really good control around this area of the map, this triangle that Na'Vi just can't get into to do any sort of farming. It's going to be out. Vision, they know matter is up there on the high ground. Do they really want to try and take a fight, though? Na'Vi heading forward. Some of them still under the cover of smoke. Blizzy trying to get close enough to roar, but there's going to be the jump straight away. They've got the grab onto the Beastmaster. The Willowis is going to be down, but Madara pots the blade through there. It's going to go for the duel on Madara. They're trying to control him, but the, the RP from MNT catches to on the back lines. Madara's getting really, really low. The Magicals round with the Stone Gaze. The combo's there once again. The will o wisp Stone Gaze causing massive issues for Vega as they'll lose four. Triple kill for Magical. That area again. Yeah. The will o wisp it just, it just stays there for so long. <coughs> They can't ignore it. They can't take it down. We saw the attempt there with the Blade Fury from the Jug, but the duel came out from Chu to control and protect that ball of light. Yeah. And that means a very successful team fight. Now an attempt for Roshan for Na'Vi. Buybacks are coming out, though. Vega do not want to let them have this. It started so well, too. Like, they they were spinning. They they got the Beastmaster pushed out of position, but he was able to roar the Jug um, before... Uh, he didn't want to commit Omni Slash to the Beast, but maybe he should have, because by the time the roar duration ended, um, he was just starting on the Will O' Wisp, and at yeah. that point, the uh, Magicals, uh, 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 Naga had, or Medusa had finally teeping in the backline, and then it made things even more complicated. Oh boy, Chu, he's in, duel. he's got the duel onto Madara, and they got the follow-up damage to kill the blast, he's coming in, Madara's gonna be blasted out the pity, oh he's dead, there's a dieback! 
on the jug. MNT, he's forced back as well. Double kill for Crystallite. That was, I mean, it was a risky play in itself. Vega buying back three heroes there when they saw Na'Vi going for the Roshan. They lose two of them, die backing. Roshan still goes the way of Na'Vi. What a disaster for Vega. I mean, he knew that Jug was going to be in the pit. There's no one else really that hits Roche well. So just by popping Blade Mill and blinking in, just duel the one guy that you can get. And the uh, crazy part is it's even better too, because if Caudal follows up with the Blinding Light, it even further guarantees that your, your guy You're is fine. not going to die. So he just keeps getting oh, dual what? damage. He's making up for the oh, fact boy. that his opponents have empowered. power. Well, now down bottom, Crystallize. He's going to start playing around with Pexu. Pexu has got the Glimmer Cape. Crystallize, can he read his movements? He yes. He oh my god. He, he knows exactly where that Crystal Maiden's heading in the woods. Now, and Pexu like has <laughs> no way to get out. It's like I can take my time to choose my chat wheel line. And I mean, Narvi's in, the, in base. the base. Lizzie's got a roar off onto Kezu. Looks like Blizzy will actually die. Uh, but the will o -Wisp is down, and that's going to help control Kezu. And at this point, Magical has got the damage to kill him off. Bad gone. Kezu buys back. DM getting his mana drained by the snake has to back out of it. But this game, it, it, it looked hopeful for Vega. They were having a very solid sort of 25 minutes, but it, it's just got entirely shaken up. Yeah. The Deuce uh, Keeper of the Light team fight combo caught them off two times, and that was too, too many times. Yeah. This game now very much back in Na'Vi's hands, and, and the odds certainly show that there. Make your two cents now if you want to pop a dollar down on Na'Vi. Man, I, I feel bad for anybody that put money down right before those two team fights happened, because it was looking it looked, pretty good you, for Vega. You could absolutely have seen a way out for Vega, and still there is that chance, but boy, is it slipping further and further away as Magical gets bigger. He's level 23 on the Deuce now. Gonna get some chase in here. But are looking for right click. He He's taking hit. some back. He is getting the mana drain, but Snake gives him more mana back. Pex is gonna pop the ult, but they keep themselves off to the side. Matter still has the only slash, and they have got an RP. Magical with the Aegis, though, not really the opportune target to go for. Glimmercape will save him. Matter is gonna go for the ultimate straight onto oh, Snake and Chu. They have chucked two more down. Magical now sort of left alone. They'll pop the RP on him. Two buybacks coming out as Navi desperately coming over to help Magical out for the team fight. Vega, they do respect this as it seems, is magical. Aegis will be used with the two buybacks that Na'Vi committed. Vega don't want to push their push their efforts any further. Don't Definitely the right time space. to back. Yeah. I mean, the, the Omni Slash to kill the two squishy heroes, the Legion Commander and the, the Carl, that's the best you can hope for right now. Outside of, like, guaranteeing a core kill on Medusa, but they just weren't ready to do that. I love what uh, DM's doing here, just cutting the creep wave. Trying to limit his opponent's ability to end up pushing mid. He can kind of do this safely. He does have BOTs. He's really fast, especially once he picks up some other items. And with his Lincolns, he doesn't even care about duel. No, not at all. Chu can't do anything about this. Can't get roared. Can't get dueled. It would have to be both together. What else is going to break it? That's it. Roar, duel, or items. Diffusal, yeah. Diffusal They've is got the best. some, yeah. Crystallize. Oh, boy. They caught him out. In they go with the, with the, with the lasso. Weaver's down for 80. Vega. That's where Bat really starts paying off. Oh, and, oh, if they can get magical as well, that'd be huge. He's got that, a TP available. He needs help now. He needs that call around the Will of the Wisp. And the Will of the Wisp, they've got the duel as well. Here again is that control. The same team fight execution once again. Vega have fallen into this trap three times now. The Will of the Wisp just seems to be too strong for Vega to deal with. Especially with, with the turn things. It wasn't just that, it was also duel. Like, they just so have so many ways. So many ways to make them stare into the eyes of the Dusa. Magical's loving it. He's level 24, still able to hold on to the cheese. He's picked up a BKB. This team fight just seems to to just amuse Vega. I mean, how do they deal with this? Do they, do they have to somehow find the Cottle before they try any sort of team fight? Because it, it just seems to be impossible for them to play into. It's definitely really hard, especially when he's got cast range. I think he has a cast range talent. I mean, there's so many other problems to worry about, right? If yeah. you just don't hit the Dusa then she's going to have issues. And they didn't even overextend their supports or anything. It was just, oh, there's another duel. Two straight in. He's found a catch. They do get the skewer That's back sick. to separate the two of them. That will keep Kezu alive a little bit longer. It means the dual damage won't be there, but it does mean the bat still dies. He's also down without buyback. Na'Vi, they're pretty much free to do what they want here. They can clean up the base, look for the racks. They've got a lot of time to work with. And this game now at 36 minutes looks incredibly rocky and, and over for Vega Squadron. They need something phenomenal at this point. Man, it just got out of hand so fast. All just a couple fights. It's Vega. They're definitely gonna remember the power, the synergy of the Deucer and the Colt. 
something that Na'Vi has shown here to great success. And as you say, Chu, this support Legion commander has also had a fantastic game. Picked in the right situations, doing so much. They'll go for the RP, but he got the stone gaze off in time. So Vega can't He's do anything with slash. this. No, he they just die. There's no oh, team fight. Man. They're the insta GG's out. It's all over for Vega. They just couldn't find a team fight. Na'Vi's team fight was just way superior. Uh, and, and a lot of the problem as well was just that Man, I feel so bad because Vega played that game so well. They, 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 they played were, it they so were even well. Even in farm, but the Jug Mag, it was paying off, it was working out. They had the correct itemization on the Juggernaut.